Hello Polygunners! Welcome to an exciting Zerg vs Terran here on Abyssal Reef. Here on the bottom right hand side in the blue Zerg trunks playing for Sloth Gaming, it's Ray's! And here on the top of the left hand side, one of my favorite players to watch, it's our red Zergy McFerguson, Jim Rising! Now this is a very standard opening game. We've got the 1-1, one, one, presumably 1, reactor coming up, Hellions probably coming out. This is the standard Terran meta. Now from this, a lot of players are choosing to either go Bio or Mech. Mech particularly popular right now, but because Raze is playing on his Raze account, as opposed to his Shade account, we can definitely assume he's going to be going bio. For those of you who don't know this player does have two accounts. He always does mech on one, he always does bio on the other. Now this may give his opponent a little bit of a tactical advantage, but I think he likes to beat his opponents even with that. I'm not really sure the reasoning behind it, but definitely a cool player. So Jim Rising, of course, is a little bit more on the aggressive side and definitely want to employ some really bizarre tactics. So we'll see as we go through this game what both of these players have prepared for us. Now, these links were hanging, like, coming down this right-hand side. For whatever reason, he is choosing to send them back home. Now sending them back over there to see a little bit of a... Uh, Repelling with the Marine and this Overlord. Now Link's going to be swinging back here into this third base location. It's really going to come down to the Hellions. He wants to avoid the Hellions. And because he saw the Hellions were hanging back with the Overlords, I would assume that's why he pulled it back. But anyways, the Hellions are on the opposite side of the map now. So we should see some kind of Fabian tactics. However, the Overlord spotting two or more Hellions. So these two Hellions are going to be swinging to the third. Now this is a super late third by Gem Rising who is actually already on four base or four gases rather moving up to a layer before taking a third base this is 100% inextricably a two base muta build as soon as the spire goes down he should take a third base this is actually one of my favorite zerg build orders however i was under the impression this doesn't work anymore now we see the stem pack is in production we've got a raven in production as well a viking going to be hunt, uh, killing off some overlords but that's going to mean a lot of uh, opportunity for Jim Rising to scout. Now, I'm not 100% sure what he saw there. Nothing too major, but he does see the tech lab, so he can assume Banshee or Raven. Uh, Banshee, a little more popular at lower levels. Raven, definitely something that requires a little more skill, so he may assume that it is a Raven. Now, he is getting some overlords in preparation for losing the ones that he just did. The Spire has begun. We've got the third base actually starting a little bit early because he did notice a lack of ground presence uh, for his opponent, Raze. Hellions can't kill a third base. Uh, Vikings aren't going to kill a third base. So, yeah. He did definitely go ahead and take an earlier third compared to when you would typically for two base muta style. Now he's getting the evolution chamber. Now this is huge because when players go for a mutalisk style, they do typically forget their upgrades. Now Hellion's trying to be a little annoying poking onto and off of the creep, but again, leaving an opening here for these lings to try and sneak into this base. <laughs> a little bit of miss micro here by Jim Rising. Of course, this is a wall off. He couldn't possibly have known that, but the command center is going to be scouted, kills off the SCV, Marine are going to repel those away, a lot of Marines showing up, a lot of uh, drones being pulled off due to that Raven, only two drones getting killed though, and we've got some really cool looking paint links, I love the new skins, a little hard to recognize units sometimes, but it's all good, Ling's doing a fair amount of work to the Hellions, it does bruise one really badly, but ultimately, Hellions pretty good against Ling's. Of course, here's the thing about 111. Your Marines, very delayed. Stem pack tends to be kinda delayed. Plus one, definitely delayed. Hellions don't shoot up, Ravens don't shoot up, Banties don't shoot up. So this huge flood of Mutalisks should give him absolute map control for quite some time. It's going to uh, really depend, does Jim Rising wanna take a fourth base? Does he wanna to try to deny the third? I think in this case, he might be better off going for a fourth base. However, 
Thors are really the issue when you go Mutas. Um, Thors definitely in, in the current meta something most Zergs are fearful of and that's why you don't actually see Mutalisks that much anymore. I'm not sure how Gem Rising plans to deal with the Thor or what circumstances have changed that allows him to think that Mutalisk would work. However, it's a very interesting concept. He is going to try and get this meta back. Does not quite get it. Is getting boxed in just a little bit by Marines and Marine reinforcements, but getting some decent kills on the Marines. He is going to swing back in here and try and get this middle turret, get a couple of the SCVs as possible. Does get that weakened meta back. Great job there. And five workers have been killed for one Mutalisk. Ah, uh, it's a lot of workers. Mules are pretty good though. Mutalisk costs gas. Uh, maybe it's an even trade. Um, maybe it slightly favors here. Not a hundred percent on that, but definitely turning out to be a very aggressive game. Still got uh, the mutalists poking in here at the natural, and well, that missile turret's a little bit far away, so that little corner can be picked at quite a bit. He does want to kill off uh, this reinforced supply depot. It's worth twice the amount gonna try and kill off multiple depots does get two of them at once great job supply blocking raise there and that should give uh jim rising a small lead going into this game he has taken an additional two bases putting him on four almost five bases compared to his opponent's three he knows that his uh his main tactics are going to be fabian tactics his opponent will be much more cost effective than he is he is going to have to uh to win this a different way, and that's going to be brute force and speed. So we've got the plus one melee, plus one carapace, plus one flying, and bailing speed on the way. Definitely not neglecting those upgrades is Jim Rising, and that is something I definitely commend him on. Good job trying to snipe that uh, turret. Does not quite manage to get it. However, coming down here in the southern location, he is trying so hard not to get caught by either of these groups of Marines, and this is where a lesser player would definitely uh, begin to uh, reveal some weaknesses and lose some of those mutalists. But no, instead, Jim Rising is actually able to pull some Banelings into this and try and get some more extra worker kills. Does kill off more of the wall than uh, you might would imagine. Less of the SCVs, but ultimately not going to matter as he did just open up a wall if his opponent does not repair it, is beginning to repair it. And, uh, oh, Jim asking for a pause. Uh, never mind. Okay. Hmm, cool. Alright, so we got drones in production, 80 workers now for Gem Rising, paired to about 60 for Rays. Of course, mules are pretty good, they don't mind gas. Uh, don't know if that's quite an even economy, Gem Rising definitely edging it out just slightly here. Using the southern location to try and sneak back here into the main, uh, interestingly not targeting add-ons, does get that missile turret, none of the SCVs though. And it looks like these Marines are going to chase him right on back out. Does have a little bit of an opening here, but that depends on if he wants to be baited into it because Raze is definitely trying to close that sandwich. Meanwhile, all this is happening, Lings and Banelings were in the third base mineral line. 20 workers have been killed, so about twice the amount of workers for Jim Rising compared to a raise. Now Jim Rising realizing he does have a huge economic advantage. There's no more reason to trade gas for workers. He is dropping the infestation pit, getting a plus two carapace. We should be expecting Hive very shortly with plus two carapace on the way. I am definitely feeling some ultralisks in this game possibly. Um, thing is, he's gonna wanna deal with Thors. Thors? Well, if you're making Thors, you can't make tanks. So ultralisks are definitely a good call. Now the thing is, is will the Thors have upgrades? Well, this is a bio style, so not so much. Um, they might have like um, armor, but not necessarily having um, the plus one uh, attack. And you see that like Rays has not been working on that at all, um, even though there is an armory. And that's going to mean siege tanks much less effective against ultralis very nice uh ray's trying to get his uh marines to sandwich uh jim rising's mutalist as he's been trying to do all this game jim rising forced to move out over some marines now a thor almost exposing himself to that uh missile turret but does manage to go ahead and pull out and looks like he is going to park it right here for a little while as he does take one two three four five a sixth the base oh my 
god, that's epic. 2-2 two, two upgrades right now for Sloth Rays, as 2-2 uh, two, two upgrades are going to be a little bit delayed when you are doing a new list style. He does uh, have, like, plus 2 um, um, flying attack in progress. He's got the plus 2 melee attack in progress now. So, taking it slow, but definitely still getting those upgrades, is a gem arising. Now, he's got a huge and hefty amount of banelings on the field right now, and that's 71 banelings, guys. 71 friggin' banelings. Let's slow this down and see what happens. Mutalist is definitely trying to pull these marines uh, into being exposed here to the banelings. He's got to wipe out a huge number of marines with these banelings in order for this to be effective and of course the banelings are not actually that good great splits here by rays and that means the ling baneling force that was coming in as reinforcements for jim rising are gonna be forced to pull back leaving this destructible debris uh to be destroyed and possibly even the script thread banelings gonna be trying to rolling 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 right here into the marines oh i got some pretty good uh Kills there, especially on those wood of mines. Only one wood of mine left on the field just now, and Jim Rising biding time, trying to get these banelings rolling, rolling, rolling. Really good links around here on that Thor, not bothering the magic box, but definitely wiping out the primarily ground army for Rays. He's got about twice the army supply right now, and has had twice the worker count for quite some time. This Thor definitely trying to get back, and the wall does go up. Great save there by Raze, and it looks like, oh my god, it looks like there are three Thors on the field. This could be the end of the Mutalisks if Gem Rising makes even a single mistake. This Planetary Fortress does not want to fall some great SCV repairs, and it looks like, looks like, yes, the Link's going to get it. Link's going to get it. Link's and Mutalisks taking that Planetary Fortress down. Link's going to be swinging here on the left-hand side, choosing not to engage this shit, waiting for those Bane links, and it looks like the Bane is going to be rolling in. Some of the Marines going to be falling to that. No, actually, the Bane is going to run right on past it, trying to deal with the. Oh, not even trying to deal with this. What am I just going to go ahead and burrow and try and bait out some major army by a raise? Gem Rising definitely floating a lot here. Over 2,000 minerals, about 1,300 gas, and oh, nice pickup there with that Thor. But Gem Rising now pulling his army back as he does realize he's got a significant lead. He doesn't have the army lead anymore. He can't keep throwing away a bad army. It, it, it's inefficient. So now we are getting the cracklings. We're getting the plus three um, ground armor. We're getting the plus one flying armor. We've got a, another base coming out for him with more gas. So he's definitely committing heavily to the gas. Kitness plating on the way. So we will be seeing ultralisks at least temporarily. He may choose to do a broodlord switch later. We will see. It looks like this wood of mine are finally going to fall. Been very careful not to lose too massively much, but uh, ultimately it does have to die. Now this overlord getting chased away, not quite getting killed. Oh, oh, almost got the kill. Um, could have picked up one of the Thors with a medevac, gone out and finished that, but raise a little bit more uh, concerned with his macro. The total non-stop aggression by Gem Rising, hitting in multiple places with nothing but speed. Not really the best units, not really overwhelming numbers, just really being annoying and hitting whenever his opponent moves out, basically in situations like this. However, Jim Rising not choosing to do a counterattack, maybe not yet, maybe not at all, not really sure. Looks like we've got an Ultralisk in a Overlord. That That's interesting. Um, Banelings rolling, 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 and... Oh, dude, that Overlord totally died with an Ultralisk in it, but the Thors are taking a massive amount of damage, taking for ever to kill these ultras. It looks like Ray is going to go ahead and tap out. GG is called. Jim Rising taking an I don't want to call it an easy victory because he worked hard for that, but a very well-earned victory there on the back of some amazing micro, impeccable macro, and honestly... Some really solid play out of both of these players. Guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you like this content, please visit us on Patreon. That keeps this channel alive, helps us run awesome events like the Hope Team League. You can tune in this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Polygon SC2. Link is in the description. That is 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to watch some of these great players competing for Polygon Gaming's money, that is going to be really fantastic. We have Eternal Dreamers signed up, Psionic Aftermath, Psystorm, we have Nocturnal Gamers, we've got All Inspiration signed up as a backup team. So many awesome teams, your favorite teams, all joined in one place. That is the Polygon Gaming banner 
Hope Team League for life, guys. Till next time, thank you so much. Shout out my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.